Hello, this is Wyatt Tanner from Electronic Thinking, and I have built here the uh, first attempt at the analog front end section of the digital storage oscilloscope, and I wanted to talk with you a little bit about it. Uh, the first thing is that I tried this out and it does not work yet. So uh, this was the first attempt, and like I said, you're getting all of the uh, mistakes. Um, uh, and triumphs as well as they happen. But before I dismantle this and, and start uh, making some changes to it, I'll kind of give you some uh, advice, first of all, on how I built this, some tips on how I built it, and what I'm going to do next to, to try to get something out of this. Okay, so the first thing that you'll notice is that I tried to run all the wires as short and as parallel to each other as possible. Um, and I tried to use some colors to the wires, like up here I have the positive 12 volts. All of these are positive 12 volts, the yellow wires here. Um, down at this part, down here, I have the negative 12 volts that just kind of hops over from one, and it's the same thing. It just doesn't run all along here. This just kind of hops along here with positive 12 volts and the negative 12 volts just kind of hops along down here. The reason I'm not using the uh, bus strips for the power lines is first of all uh, by having 12 and negative 12 um, we don't really have a, um, a power strip for the ground anymore so I, I chose to continue to use the blue line for the ground on the power strip and later when we put some digital circuits on here they're going to need uh, 5 volts so we'll continue to use the red uh, power strip as the 5 volt connector in fact I actually have the 5 volt connector hooked up right now but there's nothing making use of it right now so the other thing is whenever you're uh, making connections like this watch out for if there any chance you'll notice like these two resistors are real close together and it's real easy for them to touch one another now this is okay because both leads here where they can touch are being connected together anyway but where you want to be careful is where the leads are not actually connected together and they can still very easily touch like that you can uh, it's very easy to uh, blow up one of your chips um, or you know cause something to not function correctly all because you have something that is very easy to to touch you'll notice that it's it's quite close to this side of the capacitor but if it was to come over and touch I'm still I would be hitting the edge of the resistor and not the bare wire so just kind of watch out watch your layout to make sure that uh, give yourself enough room uh, if you put a part down and it uh, looks like that's going to be a um, uh, kind of a dangerous place to put it for the components of the board then move it to a different spot um, and you'll notice like here I'm using up all five connectors along this line and I actually had to run a line another little jumper up to start using some more connectors right above it so uh, you know definitely if you need to make more than five connections put a little jumper up make another connection I also try to avoid uh, running wires or components over the tops of integrated circuits if at all possible. Uh, sometimes it just really makes the circuit a lot easier. Um, I made an exception on this diode right here because uh, it already had a couple leads, uh, a couple wires coming around the other side um, and for this diode to just hop right over and uh, connect under this uh, pin 4 of this op amp was probably the easiest way to do that. Um, remember every time you make a connection to an open spot um, you have effectively you know used up all five of those positions and you might say well you've got lots of holes available but don't forget uh, you're also introducing extra capacitance especially if because uh, remember inside each of these holes is a little metal clip and if you've got some high frequencies coming through that wire then they're going to go into that metal clip as well and if you're using a couple of them right next together um, you have introduced some capacitance with those with those metal clips being right next to each other so where possible over here if I need to make use of some metal clips I've tried to leave a little bit of an opening like in here I've got one 
one row of metal clips not being used along here just just to kind of make sure that I separate and give it a little bit of opening uh, in those to not introduce any more capacitance because uh, there's already whenever you build a circuit like this it's going to be noisy because you've got all these leads sticking up and you've got the wires going different directions so anything you can do to help reduce that noise will will um, you know will, will really help you out a lot um, let's see I've tried to give myself some room since this was the first attempt to build this I wanted to make sure that I spread these out a little bit and uh, let's see what else would be interesting to note about this okay so when I hook this up and I applied a signal to the input over here this is the input and I've got the output right now is is coming out of this green wire um, I hooked up a signal to the input and I did not get a very clean signal at all on the output so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this in parts because I left myself enough room as I was building this I should be able to uh, disconnect for instance by making one disconnection right there I can now test this first part of the circuit uh, to make sure that if I put a signal in here that I get a clean signal out like this so by laying out the circuit in a line a logical line um, it's easy to you know once I once I've get this part trouble you know uh, the way I want it uh, then I could disconnect this resistor right here and uh, test this first integrated circuit right here to make sure that it's now working correctly and just go along the line like that until um, you know the problem might might be all of them the problem might be uh, just one or more of them is is introducing the uh, the problem and um, by taking it one step at a time it makes it a lot easier to track that down so uh, just plan while you're building your circuits uh, for ease of understanding, for you know, keep in mind the troubleshooting aspect of this. Um, now I realize it's hard to troubleshoot without an oscilloscope. That's why one of the first projects that we're building is an oscilloscope, so that you will be able to uh, troubleshoot uh, future projects. But in general, like I'm saying, is keep in mind when you're building circuits like this. Um, you know, make sure it's understandable and make sure it's going to be easy to troubleshoot later because you will encounter problems and uh, tracking those problems down and isolating them is, um, you know, can be a bit of a, a chore. So anything you can do to make it easier will, will definitely help a lot.